and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming, October the 3rd, 2019. For DCS, the F-16C Viper dropped, and wow, I had been waiting all year for that to happen, and sure enough, as soon as I got off of work, I was like, that's what I'm going to be doing all night, and CIG not to be outdone on my calendar it was like, well, that's cool, but we're going to open up Wave 1 of PTU, so, you know, I guess that's cool too. So, Go figure, went into the verse because I had to go see some stuff. And the first thing I had to go see was the Harbinger Bomber. Now, to give you a little background here, this was one of the first concepts that really got me interested into Star Citizen. And it was one of those ships that I was like, ah, I really need to get my hands on one of those. And actually, I bought my Warden because I was going to get the Buck Kit for the Harbinger because I couldn't get a Harbinger. I am a little disappointed about the interior, and I only say that because it was that big glass window with the three torpedoes. I mean, that is what sold me on wanting a Harbinger, and it's not there. Now, it's not a big surprise. We've already seen images of the interior, but the interior is still very, very nice. And it's, it's a personal loss for me because it's just when you actually walk onto it and you think about what could have been, yeah, I just missed it. But like I said, the Harbinger itself... The interior, amazing. The little details, impeccable. The weapon suite on the ship is actually fairly decent. I was actually very happy with it and would probably change out the stuff on my Warden to have those weapons instead. The size 5 torpedoes, uh, they'll drop another Warden's shields by 25% on impact, but the big takeaway from that really was that missiles and torpedoes are working right now at least, and working really well. Those size 5 torps lock on, like, faster than missiles sometimes do. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> flew true. Very happy about that. The Sentinel, on the other hand, was a ship that, ah, the old concept for the interior I wasn't as excited about, and I gotta admit, the new one, beautiful. Now, I had hoped for a little more server rackishness in it, but this big glass pane, incredible, and I just really hope that similar to the Mako, that actually becomes kind of interactive for players on it and controlling those features. So, caves! Well, I enjoy doing package missions because I love going down to the planets and seeing the different biomes and lighting effects and things. So, caves is pretty cool to me because, one, it gives more of a reason to go down and explore the planets, but also... It's just new gameplay loop, you know, it's it's new stuff to do in the verse, and I was impressed. The caves are pretty cool. Now, I did get into the PTU pretty quickly, but they'd already been kind of picked over for harvestables, so I can't show you any of that stuff, but everyone who did do harvestable stuff said it was pretty cool. Uh, you can get glow sticks at Port Olisar, and a couple tips for the caves. First off, if you just jump, you'll jump like normal, but if you walk up against some of the kind of wall sections and jump and press forward, you'll actually grab onto the wall and pull yourself up. Additionally, like I said, the caves are big enough to get lost in, but small enough to find your way out. When you go into the caves, though, do what firemen do and do a right side search, and that just simply means follow the right wall. As long as you follow that, you'll eventually lead yourself back out of the cave. So let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. Now, I said the Harbinger was kind of one of those ships that got me into the game, but the ship for 3.7 that I have been most excited about is the Defender. And wow, it's impressive and it's beautiful. They hit it out of the park. Uh, there is a small problem right now where there's like an invisible wall that you have to kind of jump over. The best way to get on a Defender, if you're able to, is to sprint full speed up the ramp, aim towards the left, top left corner of it, and spam your jump key, and I mean like Sooning F5 level spam, and you'll eventually make your way over it. And believe me, it might take you a couple minutes to do it, but it is totally worth it. Okay, the inside of this thing, I mean, we've seen images, and it, it does not let you down in that regard. The animations, amazing. Uh, the views from the pilot seats, great. The only complaint I have is the stupid radar plot, really. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, everything about the Defender is just, it blows me away. And I actually think the biggest surprise that uh, catches everyone off guard, the sound profile 
is amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, if you go into one, go ahead, turn the volume up. You are, you're going to be happy. So Quantum for every ship got some changes. It doesn't do the shake thing anymore. Uh, but the Merchantman one gets a, the Banu have their own kind of Quantum look. Ah, everything about this ship is beautiful. The exterior, the interior, and that actually is a big thing because the ship I am most excited about getting into the game, uh, ahead of the Carrick, even though we're going to have that here soon, and I'm really excited about that, is the Merchantman. And I was holding out on the Defender because if they screwed up the Defender a little bit, you know, that this is the interior on the Merchantman. The little details on this thing blow me away. I, I have absolute confidence that the Merchantman is going to be ridiculously incredible, just like the Defender. So now I can't wait for that to come out too. Otherwise, uh, yeah, the last thing to kind of bring up is, of course, first we'll have a moment of silence for Hover Mode. Yes, that's right. Hover Mode is gone. That's not news to anybody. But the Proximity Assist, I had a couple little issues with it at times. Now, again, it's day one, wave one of PTU. So let's not jump to conclusions that this is going to be a giant. Well, yeah. But I did have issues where, one, when you get down low to some planetary surfaces, uh, you kind of lose control of your ship. And I had a lot of instances where I couldn't turn my nose. Uh, I could thrust in it you know, all the different directions, but the nose of the ship couldn't be turned or moved. So went ahead, disabled proximity assist, don't have that problem anymore. And I'm really just thankful that they gave us the option to turn that off, because uh, really not a fan. I liked hover mode. I liked the challenge it brought to landing. But I understand that many of you watching this are probably throwing confetti in the air and celebrating the death of hover mode. So are you in the verse? What are you excited about? What have your observations been? What are you liking, not liking? Let's talk about it in the comments below. We do have a ship giveaway going up until the 18th of this month. Uh, just hit the card up there. It'll get you the information you need. As always, don't forget to like this video, like us on Facebook, subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you all next time.